completed a film which she wrote and directed and starred in, and she should be so proud. It's called The End of Innocence, and it's so great to meet so you. So good to meet you. You are as beautiful in person as you are in everything Thank I've ever you, seen. Nurse. Thank you. Is this an autobiographical film? No. Not at all? No. A little of you in this there? This is not my life. Oh, there's a lot of me in there. A lot. In the search for peace and finding out who yes, you are? Yes, exactly. Exactly. And in trying to understand why we try and please everyone outside of ourselves. You really grew up with that message, right? Please the man in your life. Yeah, I think everybody does. I, do. I think everyone grows up with not just please the man in your life, but try and please everyone around you. Try and make the world happy. And it doesn't matter if you, if you have to sublimate everything inside yourself. Just make everybody else feel good. And you know, it's, it's okay. I think it's nice to make people feel good and nice to make people happy. But if you have to go something against something inside yourself that says, oh, gosh, I can't do this, then it's not healthy. Or, or you don't listen to your own needs. I mean, that's what happens, isn't it? Exactly. They get stifled. Exactly. Where are you now in that search? Because you've done a lot of things to find peace inside of yourself. I think after this film that I'm in a better place than I've ever been, meaning I just took on such a big load with the support and help of so many people. But it's, I've come out of it with a greater trust and confidence in myself than I've ever had. Is it something you always wanted to do, a whole project, every part of it? No, I don't think I consciously ever really wanted to do it. It just came to that, just unfolded. A friend of mine, Henry Jaglum, came to me and said, you should be writing and directing movies. So when I went on location to, to film and star in Caddyshack 2, I said, okay, I'll write this movie. And I wrote it in a few months, and I... Raise the money and let the audience in. What is it about? It, it, it's a. It's the primarily. It's about the woman who you. It's play. about a woman, who comes to a, a place in her life where none of her relationships are working, not with her mother, her father, her boyfriend, her friends, and she has. She winds up in a rehab center, where the, she she joins a group of wonderful actors and great characters, and learns how to break the rules that have been imposed on her so she can lead a, a, a fun life, a, a happy life. You know, in, in spite of all the reading I did that said that you went through primal scream therapy and asked <laughs> and everything imaginable with such funny stories. I didn't stories, go through asked, but I went through asked, primal, no. But everything else about I did a lot else. of things, right. Um, despite that, I get this sense that there is such a light, wonderful, happy side to you. I mean, did you finally learn that it, you don't have to suffer so much? You know something? You don't have to feel bad to feel good. Huh. You just don't. But especially in our industry, where they, ha where they dangle a carrot for you at the end of a string and say, well, if you do this, then you're going to feel that way. And, well, wealth and fame will make you feel good. And none of those things do. You get them, and then you think, oh, shucks, wait a minute. Something's wrong here. I'm still not feeling too good. You grew up, the fun one of the funniest stories I think I've ever read was about your little brother, David. And it shows that early on, you did not want to share the spotlight. You've got to tell this story. So, listen to this laugh. David comes home from the hospital. Oh, yeah, this kid and this, we didn't, couldn't afford anything better. So, you know, those laundry baskets, we lined that with blankets, and that's where David slept, and this kid was suddenly getting all the attention. So there was a lady down the block whose dog had just had puppies, and I fell in love with one of the puppies. And while I was there hugging the puppy one morning, the lady said, I'll give you one of these puppies and trade me your little brother for it. I said, you got a deal. <laughs> So I ran home, packed all my little brother's clothes in this big suitcase, put the suitcase down, and my bubba said, what are you doing? I said, I'm getting rid of the kid, and I'm getting me a puppy. Oh, I was not the popular kid on the block. They almost really. traded you, huh? <laughs> so you didn't, you have not liked sharing the spotlight. But is that part of the drive that keeps you moving? I think the neediness, the thing, oh. And, you know, most actresses uh, are like that because... That's why a director says, can you do this? And they'll say, oh, I can do anything. What do you want? Da, da, da. Pleasing, change. pleasing. Exactly. Carrie, Mary and Carrie, in this recent Lear's article that I read about you, you acknowledged that you probably married Dad. Oh, definitely. My dad was a, a good-looking Carrie Grant. <laughs> oh, yeah. Funny. They looked alike. <laughs> and his age and his stability and all those things? Carrie was older than my dad. Really? Oh, yeah. What would your family think of that? I don't think they were thrilled, but... My, I have such an incredible mom and dad. They've always supported me in being an individual thinker. So they've just gone along with it. You know a nice lesson in reading what you went through was that you and Carrie, despite the split, because of Jennifer, what did you find with him in raising your daughter? A, a great friendship? No, I, it wasn't a great friendship. It was, it was hostile for a long time. But finally, ultimately, I think if you have a really great friendship with someone, 
um, it's, it's rare that you're divorcing because I think if the friendship is that great, you don't divorce. But ultimately, because of Jennifer, we did. We wound up great friends and spent holidays together. Isn't that nice? Yeah, it was. Yeah. Thank God, because I can't stand estrangement. I How's really Jennifer like it. doing? Dealing She's doing with, great with the loss of dad. Was that hard? Real tough, you huh? know, I still have both my parents, and Jennifer lost one of hers. But she's bright kid. She's strong. She's got her mom. And you two are really very close, yeah, aren't you? Yeah, we're very close. But you should tell everybody out there who's dealing with teenagers. You went through your time. Oh, sure. Oh, you have to. And if you're going to be a good mom, which is one of the most important things in my life, being a good mother, you have to say no. And they don't like you for that. You're the warden. You were not a popular, but that's not oh, the no. deal. It's not no, no, no. It's not about winning a popularity contest. It's about raising a good kid. And she is. You know? And now, she huh? is. She's and really... so I did my job. Now, let's <laughs> tell everybody <laughs> that looks like step. such a heavy film. It was. No, it was a heavy moment in the film. It's, it's where she finally acknowledges what's going on with her. But believe it or not, it's also a comedy. <laughs> well, you, you can point out a lot, a lot of things with comedy. If the audience leaves absolutely totally drained, you know, well, they, and they I found in order to have a really good comedy, you have to have moments of despair because yeah. In life, we can be absolutely laughing one moment, we can get a phone call and be down in the pits the next. Rebecca Schaefer was in this film, and that is such a tragic story, this beautiful yeah. young actress who was killed. Yeah. What was, when you were doing the editing process, I mean, was, were there some haunting moments as you realized It was, was while I was on the dubbing stage that I found out that she was murdered. Oh, my And that God. was, uh, I can't even tell you, it's still difficult to talk about. <sighs> 20 years old, one of the most beautiful young girls I've ever met in my life, murdered. Uh, <sighs> few weeks after we finished the movie. So I've dedicated the movie to her, oh, and nice. she's so beautiful in it. There's five people that play me before I come on the screen, and she is the last one. She, she plays the character that I play in her 20s, and she's, she's wonderful. I'm so glad I hired her now, because this is a real tribute to her, this movie. It is. Yeah. All right, you are a Lakers fan, and we'd love to have you switch, even if you can't make it to all of our oh! games. Lady. You're like Jack Nicholson. <laughs> you and Jack, you could always count the two of you, right? So, Diane, from all of us to you, would you please wear this? Do not burn it. Only if Larry Bird puts it on me. <laughs> <laughs> Larry, are you here? Larry? No, well, you know, he was supposed to make it at the ice. He couldn't make it to the ice. Here you go, kiddo. <laughs> Thank Enjoy. you. You Thank wouldn't wear you. that to a Lakers game, would you? You bet I would. And let us tell you that this lady believes so much in this film that she up her house to have it made. I sold my house. Sold your house to get the funding. So that's Why not? a lady who really believes in you it. put your tushy on the line once or twice in your life. It's worth it. Well, I can tell you Al's going to buy a ticket. Al? I couldn't wait for you to get here this morning. <laughs> and I'll buy one too. Good to see you, Thanks. Diane. Good luck Thanks. to you. Too. Yeah, you too. Really Thank nice you. to meet you. You too.